Hi, I'm automating the plants on my windowsill. In the last video I set up the Raspberry Pi with soil moisture sensors and the BME280 to measure temperature and humidity. Now I'm going to add four different light sensors so we can compare them against each other. The sensors will measure in a slightly different way but we'll get into what the readings mean later. First let's get them wired in and in position. As this is a north facing window I don't need to worry about direct sunlight which could damage the sensors over time. It's also inside so very little risk of rain. We just need to put them somewhere where they won't be shadowed by the plants. So a nice simple pillar at the back should be perfect. I designed this 3D printable post to hold them. The files are all available free on Thingiverse and I've included options for if you want to use one of the sensors on their own as that's all you really need to get a good insight into the conditions your plants are experiencing. The sensors simply clip into the pins. Then a plate clips over the top to hold them firmly in place. This plate then attaches either to the vertical pole so it holds them horizontal or to one of the angled pieces. We'll be experimenting with lots of different positions and angles to find out how it affects the readings so I've tried to make this as easy as possible to reconfigure. The three I2C sensors will connect in the back of these PCP header pins which are held on this little panel so I can disconnect it when I need to but I've also designed a little cable clip that can connect here instead with a single sensor or permanently wired versions. The pole is held in place with a little cruciform connector. These are actually really clever because they can plug in various shaped holes to give differing levels of stability. Pushing it down into a square hole will hold it fairly well and it's great if we're going to move it about a lot. Clamping it into a shaped hole however locks it in place very firmly and it's still fairly easy to reposition. As I design more printable parts for the pie grow, I'm going to try and make it so they're interchangeable and modular. Hopefully things like this light pole will be able to easily attach to any of the pie grow builds I do and also be easy for people to incorporate into anything they may want to design themselves. It looks kind of messy at the moment but with a bit of fiddling I managed to get everything plugged in and working. Though I did need to make another little cable splitter for the TCS because to disable the light on it you need to pull the LED pin low by connecting it to the ground wire. So on the laptop we can open up the Pi Grow GUI, connect to the Pi and go to the Graphs tab. This time I just need to select a light pole from the datable presets and it will magically make all the graphs for me. Admittedly this did require a bit of preparation. For each log I chose the options I wanted then saved it as a preset. Now if I want to load that log I don't need to go through the options I can just choose it from this drop down box. When I'd done that for all the logs I wrote a datable preset. It looks complicated but actually it's fairly simple. It's just a list of logs to load, settings to change and graphs to make. I'll be writing a tool to make this as simple as possible at some point, but unfortunately I've got plenty of things above it on my to-do list. Once we've got our datable preset making a set of graphs, we could pass all that information onto a script to make a single datable image that shows everything. I'm going to make one which will use a single sensor to give a quick and clear view of recent conditions, but we don't need to worry about that yet. Let's just have a look at the graphs. After three days it's gathered some data. The first day was cloudless, you can see it's got a smooth curve up and down as the sun rose and fell. The next two days were much more typical for British winter though and got progressively cloudier, which is represented by the more erratic shape and a declining trend, though I did shift the position of the sensor after day one to a position where it gets more light, which explains the lower values there. They all have their own scale, but we can see the trends seem to vaguely line up. The Vemmel is the only sensor that claims to give a calibrated value. Its readings are in Lux, which is a measurement designed to mimic the human eye. This isn't exactly what we want for a grow space, and we'll see why if we look at the response graph in the data sheet. It's detecting a lot more light within this central range than it is on these slopes. Anything outside this 500 to 900 nanometer window is having less impact on the final value than the light inside it. The human eye is much more responsive to green light than red or blue, so this is what we'd expect. Plants, however, are different. This graph of chlorophyll absorption frequencies from Wikipedia shows which parts of the spectrum they use for photosynthesis. These two big spikes below 500 nanometers and this dip in the center is pretty much the opposite of the eye. 
shouldn't be too much of a problem when we've got a known source like the sun though, as we can pretty much assume if the portion of light we're detecting decreases 50%, then the light we're not seeing is also about 50% lower. However, it does mean it won't be accurate when comparing artificial lights, especially those designed for plants. If we look at the TSL's datasheet, it has a similar curve, a little wider, so it will get a bit more of these early peaks, but still with that central region of 500 to 600 being more prominent, when ideally we'd want it ignored. Plus, it's picking up a lot of light past the 700 nanometer cutoff. Much of that is going to be infrared spectrum, and there's also a second photo resistor, which only measures infrared, with a little of the visible red in there too. If we compare it to the Vemmel graph we were looking at before, we see they're detecting pretty much the same thing. They have different scales, so I gave them each their own axis, and we shouldn't expect them to line up perfectly, but the shapes are pretty similar. The TCS also has pretty much the same shape, though there seem to be a few small differences, and if we look at its datasheet, we can see why that might be. It has a slightly different shaped hump, and a filter to block the infrared. These differences mean none of the sensors give directly comparable results, but if we're just measuring the light levels, all of them will be able to tell us this area is 50% dimmer than that area, or it's 25% brighter today than yesterday, which can be useful, especially when we're thinking about plants. It's got a selection of photodiodes on board, each with a different filter, which allows it to tell us the ratio of red, green and blue light, so we might be able to use those to get a better approximation of what the plants are seeing. But let's get the basic stuff sorted first. I couldn't find an exact data sheet for the analogue sensor, so we just have to compare it to the others and see how it does. I don't expect too much from it, but I'm sure it'll be fine for basic use. This graph is upside down because we're seeing the output voltage and it goes lower the more light that's detected. We can convert it to a percentage value, flip it round and that'll be fine. I'm going to leave this logging while we start work on the self-watering system, and we'll come back to it once it's got enough data to clearly see any trends, discrepancies or problems that there might be. When I've had a chance to compare them all together here, I'm going to try and pick a favourite and swap this multi-sensor pole for one with a single sensor so that I can use this with some other tests. I'll be trying them with various artificial lights and experimenting with enclosures for outdoor use. I'd love to get a proper power sensor, but unfortunately they're quite expensive. If anyone knows of any open source projects or DOI guides, I'd love to hear about them. We'll also be looking at how the moisture sensors are doing when we come back to make the self-watering system, so subscribe if you're interested. A big thanks to my Patreons who really do make this project possible. If you'd like to be part of that, then there's a link in the description and a link to the subreddit for news and updates.